collectively. What's the count on deck? So what is The Rock? Most people who have heard of The Rock may understand that it is the FDNY's Fire Academy and training headquarters located on Randall's Island here in New York City. Aspiring firefighters are trained and tested here, while experienced firefighters continue to train and hone their skills over the course of their entire careers. But as we learned, The Rock is so much more. It is the history of the FDNY, its members, its fallen, and its future. It is where the metal of the firefighter is tested and where iron sharpens iron over a career. Join us for this exclusive look at just some of the capabilities and the facilities at The Rock, which helps produce some of the very best firefighters in the world. Welcome to The Rock. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back out in the open, out in the fresh air. Ruffy, you smell it? I smell it. The fresh air. We're out and about, and we're doing another spotlight on on the FDNY Training Academy, also known as The Rock. We're down here to see Chief Lieb, who's running the Training Academy. But before we do, Ruffy, we uh, give you a little tidbit of history here. The uh, rock back in 1960 was on Welfare Island, which is now Roosevelt Island, but it moved in the mid-70s to Randall's Island here, and it's been here ever since. There's no probies here today, but the chief uh, is going to show us some of the memorials that they've made here, some of the interesting uh, training facilities that they have here, and uh, I'm sure you will not be disappointed. So uh, without further ado, let's go check it out. Let's go find the chief. Okay, boys, so here we are with the Chief of the Fire Academy, Chief Frank Lieb, and our first stop is gonna be at the chin-up bar because every morning when the probies come in, what do they have to do? They gotta work. PT. They gotta do PT, so I'm gonna shoot at the Chief Lieb. What, what's the PT like today, Chief? Welcome to the Fire Academy, Oh, guys. thank you first, yes. Happy Good to have you again. Do to see you Welcome, to, Welcome to the Fire Academy. Yeah, so as you guys said, physical fitness, a critically important part of, uh, of being a firefighter. And uh, so this is the area where we do our, our PT every morning, as you mentioned. And unique about it is we have the, the pull-up bar here that's made of 911 steel. And our members will get up there and they'll do some uh, they do some pull-ups or chin-ups uh, right on the bar and uh, should inspire you to do more knowing that it's made of 9-11 steel. Um, there's a plaque that's on that's on it. It says, uh, be proud, be strong, but most of all, be prepared, right? So pretty pretty fitting that uh, that we have that here. So, you know, I'm surprised you're not you're not doing one, but you know. Oh, you know. Well, wait, there's a little jump up there too. <laughs> you know? So, I can't know. hurt. <laughs> <laughs> One of the other memorials in this area that we have is uh, we had a, a probie who, uh, who died of a medical condition while he was here in probie school, uh, Jamal Sears, and we, this is the area where, uh, where that probationary firefighter stood every morning when they did their roll call and when they did their PT. So here it is, he died you know, November 11th of 2008. Wow. So everything here, right, so we decorate with a purpose. Everything we do here is to remember our fallen members and, and kind of build off of what the previous generations have done. Never forget. It's, it's more than just a tagline, right? It's something that right. we um, that we certainly what, are there make certain sure we do. criteria that you still have to pass? Certain amount of pull-ups, certain amount of sit-ups, yeah, push-ups. Yeah, so they have entrance runs and different stuff, all right. part of it, right? So they, they draw off the list, starting with number one, right. uh, and they have to pass uh, the CPAT and different testing to get here, and then that criteria evolves towards the end that we make sure that we're we're putting out to the field. Uh, physically fit uh, probationary firefighter. Our job isn't to produce uh, a seasoned veteran firefighter, right? So you, you think about it, when I got on the fire department in 1992, probie school was eight weeks long. 
Um, I remember I got a certificate from New York State out of the blue three, week, three years later, congratulating me that I'm no longer an apprentice firefighter. I mean, you think about in your firehouses, um, you got a new member and it was your job to train Teacher, that member, right? right? So, because right. that member, no matter what company, your first company, you know, where'd you start out, right? Everybody wants to know how much time and where did you work. That's right. right? They're, they're, look, they're, they're evaluating the pedig pedigree that you bring, but they're also evaluating that first company. How, did, how good of a job did they do? Not necessarily Proby School. Proby School is going to get that member to be there. That's why, you know, we don't give the new firefighter uh, the OV, right? And even the first time we give them the OV, when is it? It's, it's on the day yeah, tour, yeah, right. right? So there's an evolutionary process to becoming a senior firefighter and a senior seasoned firefighter, right? So it's not like 50 first dates where, you just, where you're never evolving, that you're, right, that you're right. actually learning and progressing. So the, the company in the process is so critical to making sure that we have uh, well-trained firefighters. So we are more or less molding them in order to go out there and learn. So you're working on their attitude, you're working on getting them basic their head skills. straight, basic, basic skills, basic skills to go out to the firehouse to learn the correct way. Put them in the right frame of mind to go out there and learn. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, again, everything here is with a purpose. Uh, the classrooms are decorated with a purpose about uh, knowing about outside the auditorium, the, the, uh, the plaque for Frisbee and Fitzpatrick, understanding the evolution of the, of the life-saving rope, right? Which we're now re evolving to the KLSR, the Kermandel life-saving rope, right? So that all started in the 80s and it's evolved over the years. And so all of those things and, and the probies uh, learning all that is critically important. And one of the main components of that is our, our newest structure here, which is the Proby Pavilion, which is back over there. And uh, let's say we let's head over there and let's talk about that. All right, guys. So we're here with Chief Lee. We're at the new Proby Pavilion. I was not here at that time. Uh, this wasn't here, but uh, he's going to give us the inside skinny on uh, what what's going on here. What do you got, Chief? Yeah. So this is our newest structure here, the Proby Pavilion. Uh, this is a structure that's going to be dedicated to the seven members of the department uh, that were killed in the line of duty or died in the line of duty while they were assigned to the fire academy. So if you take a look at the plaques on the wall over here, six of them, the bottom six. That's all the firefighters that were assigned here this, that were uh, that passed away on 9-11. The top one there, that's Jamal Sears. He's the firefighter that died while he was in Proby School. We saw his area on the floor earlier. Um, and then all of the all the members of the department that were Probies from 1960 on, there's 28 of them. Oh, wow. That's the that's the top liner that we have there. So um, in here, what we do is the Probies will have instruction. You can see that they're set up to do. Um, to do a PowerPoint on mass decon. That'll be for the probies. And um, the other things that we have in here is this table, which Building 10 built for us. This project was, I went to rescue school and I said, I want to build a pavilion and I want it to look like the Tommy Bone Pavilion, but, but larger and a little bit fancier. So I said, who, was the, who, who took care of that? So I, Richie Schmidt from Rescue 4 and Kevin Perfitlich, Lieutenant in Rescue 2, they were the leads on that project. And Basically, you know, you know we're firefighters, right? All you gotta do is just tell them, don't give them too much direction. Just tell them what you want done. <laughs> They'll run with it. I want, that's right, right? It's, it's absolutely amazing. So they reached out to all different people that, that, that they knew on the, on the job and the trades that could, that could help us out. And, and this is the result. So people say, you know, sure. whose idea was this? And I said, it, it was so many different people's idea. Yeah. Uh, just the, the idea to build it was my idea, but, but the, they blew away, as our members always do, they blew away any expectation. I mean, the flag on the wall made a hose. Um, so if they, you know, they thought, what if we're doing the, uh, the national anthem under there? We're starting a program where that you have that. The, the table that Building 10 did, because they, they, everybody, uh, everybody at the fire academy wanted to do something. So they built this, it's a couple of tons. It's, I mean, it's just a, the whole project is just That's a labor same. of love. But even the table, so there's 10 tables under here. Um, there's five black and five red, and it's an engine and truck for each borough. Um, the lights are made of, of real helmets, and um, you know that they were able to wire them and make them at, at night. This is just an incredibly wow, beautiful really looking the facility. Skill set on firefighters is amazing. It really is amazing. Cross in the uh, the bars holding everything together. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, every, the more you look at it, the more you see all different things like that. So if you come around over, over to this side, and you'll see the plaque that's uh, the dedication plaque. This, this was funded, all the material for this was, was funded by the FDNY Foundation. You know, it wouldn't have been possible without, without their generous uh, 
uh, donation, right? So you can see what it's what it says on there. I mean, it really just talks about when, when we, you talk about the tradition and how we teach our firefighters from day one, right? Ingrained into the FDNY culture and, and what it means to never forget, and all the different traditions that we that we have here. I've mentioned it a couple times. Everything we do here um, is done for for a meaning, right? Whatever it is, from the street sign. Uh, for all the streets are named after members that have been killed in the line of duty right. from the 23rd Street fire to 9-11 to, to, to others That's just it right. We we don't we don't forget. We don't it forget our fallen. I think yeah. the best part of that is that The new guys coming right they they get that sense right that we we don't forget and they keep the tradition of showing respect and and trying to to be uh, Like to be that shows citizen. tradition right out the gate when they come right, yeah, right. Shows tradition as soon as they get here as probies. Yeah, absolutely. So um, in that vein, so the uh, Building 14, the subway simulator, right. um, we'll head over that way. We'll talk about the airplane and we'll talk about Building 14 because Building 14, we're going um, we're gonna to be dedicating that to a member that was killed in the line of duty in 1970. Wow. And we're going to be dedicating that building to him in January. Let's so let's head there. Join us next time for part two, where we continue our tour of The Rock and we also run into some surprise special guests. Stay tuned.